perform linear programming like this example that you see here, we first need to go into Excel and we need to make sure that the solver add-in is available. If the solver add-in is, add is not available under your data ribbon, then go to File and go down to Options. And under Options, you will select Add-ins. And under Add-ins, see the Manage Excel Add-ins, hit Go. And you want to make sure that Solver Add-in is selected. If it is not, select the Solver Add-in and hit OK. You should now see under your data ribbon the Solver Add-in. So now we can use Excel to do our linear programming. So let's return to our example. And the first thing we need to do is create mathematical formulas from the example that was given. So in this particular example, a company makes two products, X and Y, and it needs two machines, A and B. Each unit of X that is produced requires 50 minutes on machine A and 30 minutes on machine B. Each unit of Y requires 24 minutes on machine A and 33 minutes on machine B. The start of the current week, there are 30 units of X already on hand and 90 units of Y. We have available processing time on machine A, about 40 hours, and on machine B, we have 35 hours. We know that the demand for X this week is forecasted to be 75 units, and for Y, it's forecasted to be 95 units. Our goal is to maximize the total number of units, X and Y, uh, that we have at the end of the week. So we need to start with some formulas. Well, when it comes to time on machine A, we know that to produce X, you have to spend 50 minutes on machine A. So however number of units of X we produce, let's call that X, we have to multiply that times 50 to look at the time on machine A. Well, it's true that machine a is also used to make product Y, and when it comes to product Y, it's going to spend 24 minutes on machine A for every unit of Y that is created. So we have 50X plus 24Y, and we know that machine A is available for 40 hours a week, and we would have to multiply that times 60 so that we can look at it in minutes. And so our 50x plus 24y must be less than or equal to 40 times 60. Now when it comes to the time for machine B, to produce x we need to spend 30 minutes per unit of x on machine B and we need to spend 33 minutes per unit of Y on machine B. And machine B is available for a total of 35 hours, which we need to turn into minutes. And so machine B needs to run 30 times X plus 33 times Y, which has to be less than or equal to the 35 hours, which we turn into minutes by multiplying times 60. Then we need to look at how much inventory we're going to need. Well, demand for X is currently forecasted to be 75 units. So we need to have at least 75 units on hand. We already have 30 units on hand, plus we're going to make a number of X. So X plus 30 must be greater than or equal to 75. We need to have at least 95 units of Y. We're going to make some Y and we already have 90 units on hand. So 90 plus Y is greater than or equal to 95. And last, we want to look at, we want to maximize. We want to maximize the total number of units that we have, which will be the number of X that we make, plus the 30 we have on hand, plus the number of Y that we make, plus the 90 of Y we already have on hand. Okay. So now we can go to our solver. And we can type this information here into Excel. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put in some placeholders and then let the solver function change those numbers. So in terms of the units of x and y that we produce, we'll put those as 1 and let solver determine the appropriate amount. We know that our inventory on hand for x is 30, our inventory on hand for y is 90, and so we want this x plus 30. We know we want that to be greater than or equal to 75. So we'll add those up in this total box here and we're going to want that to be greater than or equal to 75. And for y, we're going to let solver determine the number of units produced. We have inventory on hand of 90. We're going to use equals sum or you can click on the two here and add them together and use that to total up the amount and we want that to be greater than or equal to 95. Okay. Remember that we had two other formulas that had to do with machine time and so let's add those formulas here as well. So when it came to x we had uh, 50 minutes on x, we had 24 minutes on y for a total amount of time. So let's take that 50, let's multiply it times the number of x, which right now we're just 1, because that's a placeholder, and then we want it to add the 24 minutes on y times the number of y. So you'll know that this is correct right now if it's essentially 50 plus 24. Okay. We need that 50 times x plus 24 times y to be less than or equal to, and this is where we had our 40 hours times 60 minutes. Then for machine B, you'll recall that it was 30 minutes per unit of x, that it was 33 units 33 minutes per unit of y, so our total time is the 30 times our units of x, which right now is just 1, plus the 33 minutes for y times the number of y, which is currently 1, so we'll know we have this formula correct if it's essentially just 30 plus 33 at the moment. And we need that to be less than or equal to our 35 hours times, of course, our 60 minutes in an hour. So now we have our formulas translated into Excel. The next step is to put them inside Solver. So let's go to our data. Let's go to Solver. And we need to have it set an objective. Well, we need to set the objective. And the objective is going to be our total of all the units available. So in fact, let's go back out of here, let's close this, and let's create equals sum open and have it add up for us how many x and y plus the 30 and the 90 on hand. So remember that was our, our goal was to maximize that total. So let's create this cell right here so that when we go back into data and solver, we can set that as the objective. And the objective is to maximize that one by changing, and here's where we highlight our ones, because these are the numbers that Solver is going to change in order to maximize the total number of units we have on hand. Now you'll see that there says subject to constraints, so this is where we need to add in those formulas we've just created. So let's start here and we will start by having the total. So this total comes from adding how many x's we produce plus 30 on hand and we need that number to be greater than or equal to that current demand we have of 75. So let's add that one. Now the next cell reference we're going to look at is the y plus the 90 we already have on hand. So we take the total here 
and we need that to be greater than or equal to the demand, which was 95. So we've set two of our formulas. Now we have two more to add, so let's hit Add. And now we're going to look at machine time. So we need the total amount of time spent on machine A, which you'll remember comes from looking at the time on machine A for X times the number of X plus the time on, mach on machine A used for Y times the number of Y. And we need that to be less than or equal to the processing time available, which you remember is the 40 hours times 60 minutes. So we have adding one more, and this last one will be the time on machine B, which is the time making unit X and how long and the number of units of X plus the time on machine or time for Y, that's a 33 minutes, times the number of Y. And we need that to be less than or equal to the total amount of time that machine B can be working, which is 35 hours times 60 minutes to convert it to minutes. So you'll notice here our constraints. The, not, the units produced, we need them to be more than demand. That's why the first two are greater than. And the other two, which have to do with time, were constrained by the time available, and so they are less than. And now we can hit Solve. And you can keep your solver solution here. And we can see the optimal number of units produced that we are going to produce 45 units of X and we're going to produce 6.25 units of Y.